You just need to do this like one time a week for 10 reps and you will be jacked out of your mind. Yes. Okay, you two smart trainer people. I don't know what the heck this thing is or this thing or like this looks like a like a jetpack. So I thought this was a gym. Explain to me what the, the ins and outs of these modalities. Like what is what is the difference even between one of these and one of those and one of those over there? Well, why don't we put this, I'll put this one away since this is more of a specialty bar. And Grace, if you want to get started, talk about yeah. the two most basic and probably the two most commonly used tools in the gym. Tools, yeah. if you want to call them that. Dumbbells, which is one of these, one of these, and then barbells. Yeah, dumbbells, I like to say DB or BB, barbell yeah. or dumbbell. I'll, I'll come back in and talk a little bit more about the, the specialty bars. Okay, you. sure, yeah, sure. You have a lot of yeah, wh bars. Why would one want to use dumbbells versus barbells versus what's it and who's it? Okay, well first let's talk about what these are. This is a dumbbell. So if you see, this is just one type of a dumbbell, a hex dumbbell. They always tell you how much they are on there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, dumbbells are great when you're first getting going in weightlifting. They start usually at a very low weight increment, as low as like one, two, three pounds. And you always want to be working towards progressive overload when you start training, always adding a little bit more, making things a little bit harder. So dumbbells are such a nice way to go about that. You can easily see the weight you're using. You don't have to load them up at all. They're already ready to go. You just grab them off the rack and you go. Oh, see, there we go. Two pounder. Two pounder. And 90 pounder. And 90 pounder. Wow. So you can easily, without a lot of effort, safely grab dumbbells and get going on your lifts. Um, Bars are great for a lot of reasons, but let's just talk about the transition from dumbbells to barbells because sometimes dumbbells, it's a nice condensed weight. They can get heavy to lift for certain things. And also sometimes you just want to work with both arms connected to a, a spot or to your, have your shoulders connected to one bar versus squatting. It can get awkward to hold really heavy dumbbells up here. Um, so sometimes people like to move into the bar. Also, when you get into that progressive overload, oh, we're right here. And we're adding more and more and more weight what are the biggest dumbbells you've ever seen? Dumbbells? Yeah. Uh, 250 pounds at the Metroplex gym. You've seen Ooh. them? Wow. I, think I lifted I've... one. Wow. Which... I've seen 150s, I think, in person wow. is the I biggest I've seen. The biggest Two, seen. 250 pound dumbbells. Well, and so the other thing about dumbbells too, like you're gonna find dumbbells at most gyms. Well, not every gym has yeah. dumbbells at least, yeah. yeah. So they're an easily accessible piece of equipment um, at gyms and at home. Bars, maybe you don't have at home, but every gym is going to have them. Your average Olympic bar or general Olympic bar is going to be 45 pounds. You always want to take that into consideration when you start adding weight to your bar. Some bars have what we call a female bar, um, which is 35 pounds. And Hunter's going to get into more of, this is our trap bar, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, then on our bars, we still want to be having progressive overload, right? So 45 pounds there, but once that starts to become too easy, we've got to make it harder. So we have a couple ways that we do that. Uh, one way is by adding metal plates. These are your regular metal plates. And just like your dumbbells, these are great because they're going to tell you how much they are. Not to be confused with the kilograms, unless you like to track your weight in kilograms, but then you're going to have to convert the bar weight. Hunter, do you know what the kilogram weight is of an Olympic bar? It should be like 20 something. Yeah, I think. 2.4, yeah. Yeah, like 2.4, something like that. So you can add weight using your metal plates. Um, and you attach them using guys like this. This is a nice, easy clamp. Just slides over the bar. You put your plate on. 20.4 20, 20. kilograms. 20.4 kilograms. And uh -huh. then you would just clamp, clamp it in like that. So that's how you're connect, gonna put your plates on the bar. You always wanna make sure you clamp them because otherwise you could end up with a disaster. Well, actually I'll let Hunter talk about times that you might not. But the other type of clamp we have, you might see these around your gym. So don't think you're off the hook on clamps just because you can't find one of those fun plastic you guys. There's also collars that look like this. So you're gonna just squeeze it, slide it on the bar, get your plate locked in, slide it off, okay? Wow. So you can use either type of clamp oh. collar that you want to lock your weights in place, safety first. Um, and we also have number plates. So. Here are your bumper plates. 
These are really good for deadlifting when you're gonna be hitting the floor in between your reps and watch what they do. This is fun. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you're not actually gonna bounce them that hard because you're going to control your eccentric, but as you well, are going to yeah. uh -huh. feel good using those. Okay, so we have bumper plates, we have our, our metal plates. You're gonna connect them using clamps. If your standard straight Olympic bar, which is normally gonna be 45 pounds. If you're ever working out and you're like, I'm not sure how much this bar is, you can usually ask someone in the gym, they'll know, or go ahead and weigh it if there's a scale present. Um, Hunter's gonna talk more about some of our specialty bars that we have here and things you might run into at a gym or when you're just um, like looking at a program that you're working through, it might recommend different types of bars. So talk mm -hmm. about what those are. So first off, this one here, the Kabuki PR deadlift bar. Now this one here may look like a standard barbell to some, but it, it, as we line it up here with this one, we will line up the right side. You can actually see it's about a foot longer. Ooh. Okay. Now a deadlift bar, what it does is essentially it gives you more, it's called width. But basically, it's how much the bar bends. Maybe we can kind of we can we'll throw up a video uh, and you can see the bar bending, and it's actually th this exact bar. But like, if I was to stand on it, it actually like bends a ton. It could totally hold my weight, but it bends a ton. Oh, yeah. Right. And then it's a smaller diameter around, so it's easier to grip onto. So that's a deadlift bar, the Kabuki deadlift bar, and in my opinion, is the best. I'm not even sponsored by them yet. <laughs> After yet. that, I would say one that's probably going to be even more commonly used than that guy is going to be an easy curl bar. The way they spell it out is literally just E and Z curl bar. I don't know why, but that's how they they do it a lot of it's times. It's easy. That's why. <laughs> yeah, these are kind of sweet because like this one here specifically that we have, and I will say they're all different. Ask your gym, right? This one's 15 pounds. Right? The nice thing about this one is for bicep curls, for example, it's a lot easier on your wrist. If you don't need to be in a fully straightened out position, you can kind of have a little bit of a curve. Oh, like sure. so. You got different curves. Some of them will have even more, right? Okay, that's that one. Love that one for a lot of arm stuff, things like that. Next up, we love this bar here. This is called, I call it a cambered bar or cam. But basically, when you are, and if you've ever seen our, um, our deadlift video of whether or not deadlifts are cheating, it's kind of cool because Tom mentions how bench pressing might be cheating if you use a regular barbell. <laughs> yeah. So. Cuts off that range. This one, if you're, if you're worried about cheating while you're doing barbell presses, these are great to use. If your gym has it, basically I would be stopped right about there, probably, right, yeah. with the barbell. Now I can come down another two, three inches. Big range of motion. Team full ROM. Right on. All the way up. These are actually great for, for that. And then also, I like the camber bar as well for big range of motion in your bent over row so you can get a little- Aha, uh -huh. flipping it, I see. Yeah, so those are great. Camber bars. I've seen more and more gyms with camber bars in the past um, couple years here. Next up, I wouldn't really call this a specialty bar. I feel like a lot of gyms have these, but call these hex bars and or trap bars, right? It's kind of like a hexagon, so we'll, just, we'll call it hex bar. But cool thing about the hex bars, they're great for deadlifting. Outside of that, I don't, I don't really know what you'd use them for. Maybe deadlifting and farmer's carry. So they're great, but not the most versatile thing as far as how many things you can do with them. However, these are great for doing deadlifts as such. Kind of like disperses the weight across the whole body system instead of just the posterior. Now once again, Team Kabuki here. So the Kabuki Strength Safety Squat Bar, um, and or they, they actually call it the Transformer Bar. This one's sweet. You can get over 20 different adjustments on it. And essentially, you're just able to adjust where it's loaded. So this one basically mimics a front squat position, right? And then it also has a hip hinge position. My camera is not focusing. Focus! Maybe Focus. we could 
Maybe we could splice some photos of me doing some good mornings on here. We'll splice in some of that, yeah. Splice it in, keep it spicy. <laughs> and then this one here as well, you also have adjustments. But let's just say that a lot of gyms, a lot of gyms are not as cool as Success Fitness, so they don't have most the, aren't, most aren't, most are not. So they uh, they don't necessarily have the Kabuki bar, but a lot of gyms have the Safety Squat bar, which is basically what makes it a Safety Squat bar is is this here. It just has the handles, it has padding, all that kind of stuff. So when you're say if you're doing a squat, now it's on my shoulders really nice, and actually like. It's a little bit offset, but I can just let go of it and even just do squats. Oh! I wouldn't recommend that, but it's nice because it just stays on. It just stays on your shoulders really nicely, and we we really like these for the good mornings, as such. Good morning, or show your butt off, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> kind of the same thing at the end of the day. Um, and then, I don't know if we should talk about this guy or not, I mean, it's kind of taboo to talk about these in some gyms. Oh. We like them. I love them. I think they're great. But it's technically just a bar that's attached to other bars, so it keeps it in place. With this one, I can do whatever I want, and it won't move this way. It just, it's up and down, up and down. So, this is the Smith Machine. Mr. Smith. Hopefully you don't get canceled for the Smith Machine talk here. But, <laughs> uh, the Smith Machine's great. I mean, I love Smith Machine, for example. If you want to do a quad emphasized high bar squat as such. Oh, my knees are over my toes. We're definitely going to get canceled, huh? Oh my... <laughs> How dare! Smith machines are great, um, as long as they're not like, the, you know, like if somebody's whole program was made up of Smith machine presses, I'd be a little bit concerned. But if you have, say, one Smith machine like chest press, and then you're also doing dumbbells, flies, all that kind of stuff, aka you don't train at Planet Fitness, um, you're going to be totally fine. And the Smith machine is a great tool to be used. So lots of tools here. So, most versatile tool in the gym is going to be, in my opinion, a barbell. So you 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 prefer barbells to dumbbells? You'd say? I think they're more more versatile. So, okay. like for example, uh, when I when I travel, if I have my my truck, I will bring a barbell with weights as opposed to bringing dumbbells because you can do so much with barbells. And, ah. You know. So what's the benefit of a dumbbell over a barbell, if there is any? The one of the main things is. I'm gonna go down on this bench to show me. This bench right here, this one, yeah. this guy. The Rep Fitness Bench. We're gonna get a ton of sponsorships after this one. <laughs> uh, so, let's just say that when I'm doing chest press, naturally with the dumbbell, I have a little bit of a deviation in one of my shoulders for stability or mobility. And maybe, maybe I don't even realize it, but my pressing almost looks like this. And that might just be what one of my shoulders or one of my arms need to do. If I have dumbbells, it's fine to be in that position and I can articulate into a way that feels best. Whereas with the barbell, you can move it this way, but your hands are always fixed. And it might just not be the greatest position for you there, as opposed to the dumbbell, like I said, you can always find the right position, okay? Oh. Now that's, that's actually the same reason that you don't want your programs to be entirely made up of, say, the Smith machine, because the Smith machine, if I was doing like an upright roll, it's really keeping me in just one plane, right? Yeah. Whereas if I had dumbbells, I could go in all the different planes and my body will kind of naturally just tell me where to go, right? Oh. But, I would say the barbell is more versatile just because you can load them a lot heavier and things like that. Um, like, for example, if you were to do dumbbell RDLs like this, it kind of just get, it gets really cumbersome to hold on to the dumbbells. Um, like, I've done dumbbell RDLs with 150 pound dumbbells, and it just gets really cumbersome to hold on to. Um, and it's 
kind of dangerous to get them in and out of the rack versus like if you had a barbell set up on a rack, it's so easy you just step, step, and then you're doing your RDLs and it's easier to hold on to and all that kind of stuff as you get stronger. So I think that's, that about covers it. That about covers it. Well, hold on, one more thing. Like, what's the major difference between a metal plate and a bumper plate outside of one being more bouncy? Well, I would say that if you're not able to lift 135 pounds, which is what it would be if you put a standard 45 pound plate on a barbell, uh -huh. if you're not able to do that for say like a deadlift, it's gonna be hard because you have to deadlift like almost all the way down to your feet with say a 10 pound plate. A lot of people can't do that without rounding their backs like that. So you could use the plate that has the same diameter, like round, same size uh -huh. like the 10 pound. And then you're only at 65 pounds, so 65 instead of 135. And if you can't lift 135 pounds, you can use that 10 pound plate to build up the same thing, and then you build up your strength to eventually get to 135. And then the other area would be, um, you know, some gyms don't want you to drop metal plates on the floor, rightfully so, because it can break the floor, it can break the plates, all that kind of stuff, whereas rubber is gonna protect the barbell, protect the plate, and then also protect the floor. So that would be the main thing. Um, so I would say like, if you're at a gym that has the rubber plates, be respectful of that gym and how many you use. Like don't load up 16 rubber plates on each side and use every single one. You really only need to use one and then you can do metal after that if you use a bunch of plates, so. Oh my. That would be the, yeah, the rubbers are nice to have though, for sure. Coach Hunter, a wealth of knowledge, and Coach Grace, who vanished into thin air, gone, poof. She's on her phone. Oh, she, she didn't vanish after all? No. Well, she's working out. Well, anyway. Thank you, Hunter, and thank you, Grace.